good morning sunday morning story time you know what i mean um no camera because you know i don't really like to do the camera stuff this video is of me driving up the mountain uh, highway 18 to pick up a trailer in uh not in Crestline, but in uh was it twin peaks i think is maybe the city name i don't know this video is a little old i I didn't really know what I was gonna do with it. I was using it initially for a day in the life video, but uh, once I got to the landfill, I didn't get that much good video. And uh, honestly, it wasn't very, very uh, interesting pickup. So the only thing about it is you'll see when I get there that the trailer was kind of hanging off, um, you know, like the cliff. Uh, it was a pretty tight squeeze, but other than that, it was a very empty load. Oh, that's what happened. I didn't take it to the landfill. It was an empty load, so I took it home and I threw it in another trailer, and uh, and I, I I didn't even empty it. So, anyway, I wanted to talk today, you know, my Sunday morning story time to you guys about my biggest mistake renting out the dump trailers. Um, it was just like in my face. This happened, and you know, will I be able to recover from it? Obviously, I did, but I definitely at the time really considered whether or not I wanted to keep doing this business. But I mean, it's like this, like, have you ever started a business without the full knowledge of, of just how bad it can actually get? And then you've been so excited to start working for yourself. Um, and then you have one mistake that can end it all. Right. So this video will explain the time that I actually felt like that and what I did to overcome it. You know, if you're new here, you know, be sure to subscribe. Uh, our community is literally unmatched. I have a nice little following on TikTok, but I, I think that spending time here on YouTube is much more important as the people that are here, my uh, 600 plus subscribers that are here, they, they they care more about the content than the people on TikTok. So anyway, we're gonna go a little Sunday morning story time. And uh, yeah, here it is, all right? So just imagine this, it's a beautiful Monday morning. The trees are treeing, the birds are birding, and the tweakers are tweaking, all right? It's uh, July 26, 2021, and I'm staring at my two month old trailer, right? I bought it brand new uh, and the frame is bent. <laughs> The frame is bent. I'm, I'm more frustrated than ever with myself. Nobody else. I bought the trailer brand new in May 2021. Quit my job full time uh, to go into this trailer rental business in uh, what June 2021. And now it's July, and my only trailer has a bent frame. So when I when I started the journey, right, I didn't expect to do YouTube. Please excuse the lack of video regarding this incident. And honestly, I was so frustrated with the situation. There's also really a lack of usable photos. Um, I'll do my best to immerse you into the story, but uh, there's there's hardly any video and a few photos. I mean, one or two photos. All right, so let's rewind. Five days before this mess, my business phone rings. It's a nice woman, let's call her uh, Julia. Julia lets me know that she'll be having some dirt removed from her backyard for a pool but that the contractors have already gotten rid of most of it. She explained that her contractor had asked her to order a dumpster for the remaining dirt and they would load it. That should have been my first red flag. You know, why would the contractor ask her to get rid of the remaining dirt or like a, uh, a small amount of dirt if they've already gotten rid of most of it? It was uh, nowadays I would think about that as my red flag, but at the time I just said, okay, that makes sense. Um, she let me know that she found me, you know, found my dumpster company on Yelp and uh, after the terms were explained to her, uh, she'd be willing to do it. And the contractor had already let her know that the dirt would not be that much since they had already got the majority out. Um, my terms at the time were pretty bad. I mean, it, it was definitely in their favor. Um, I think I charged 250 with two tons included. And I only charged, I think, 50 a ton over or 45 a ton over with no max. So. Um, I don't know how much this load ended up weighing, but you know, in theory, it, let's say if it weighed uh, eight tons, 10 tons, um, there was no max. She would only have owed $500 max, um, even though the, that's double the capacity of the trailer. So nowadays that's, that's better in my side. Um, but I, I know you can see where this is going. So I'm not, you know, stupidly because I'd never done a job with dirt before. I went straight to Google, like everyone would and searched how much does dirt weigh? said that dirt should weigh about 2000 pounds per cubic yard. And that, uh, you know, in my head, quick math says that her contractor had said that there was about three yards. So quick math says like what, three, three yards, 6,000 pounds. Um, because of that, I asked her to ask Julia to prepay for three tons and, and I'll do it. 
So I think I, I charged her probably like, let's say 350. Actually, I'll post up the invoice for her, the original invoice right here of how much I charged her. I don't have it in front of me, but this is how much I charged her. Um, I sent over my contract, which she signed, and I dropped off the trailer sometime around 8 a.m. on the 24th, which was a Saturday. Um, real quick, do you need a contract for this business? Uh, check out the link in my description or wait until the end to see how you can get my rental agreement and access to my uh, private dumpster rental discord group with hundreds of members. All right, so when I dropped off the trailer, everything was normal. I did everything as I normally would. I was scheduled to pick it up Sunday evening. When I turned the corner, actually, I take that real quick. So <laughs> Sunday morning, right? So I dropped it off Saturday. Sunday morning, I was uh, at a family function with uh, my cousin and my sisters. And uh, I just kept thinking about this job because I was like, man, you know, when we leave here, we're going to have to go pick up the trailer um, at night. And I, I was a little concerned that it would be heavy, you know? So I remember telling my cousin David, like, yeah, dude, this, this thing's going to be pretty heavy. Hopefully, you know, nothing goes wrong. And uh, yeah, I, I spent my whole day, you know, where my, my family was having a good time, like stressing out about this trailer. So when I when I turned the corner to pick it up, right, I could, I could see the tires were almost touching the ground like super 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 pancaked out and uh the rim was pretty much touching the ground um when i backed my truck up to the hitch i could tell you know it was super heavy and it, it didn't even look like where i left it like the hitch as far as how high i left it it looked like it was just falling straight into the asphalt and uh at the time i was using my my 1998 you know, chevy silverado 2500 with the uh, 454 it's a long bed heavy duty and uh I struggled to get the jack to lower onto the hitch. You know, when it's super heavy, it's really, really hard to push the jack up. But I mean, I even had a hard time turning the jack to where it went down onto the hitch. It was so heavy. Um, and I was doing those turns at a, like a quarter at a time, struggling. I mean, having a good, hard time doing it. And uh, once I finally got it onto the hitch on the ball and everything was settled, um, I got the wheel chocks off and then I climbed to the top to, you know, see the dirt, see what I was working with. And it was perfectly filled to the top with dirt and perfectly filled. I mean, there was not a single gap. It was like a, a straight across, you know, from, from each side, every corner, it was perfectly packed with dirt. It didn't hang over the top at all, but it was perfectly packed with dirt. And, uh, I didn't have a clear idea of how much it actually weighed. So I got into my truck, put it in drive. And just as I started to try to move it, the hitch snapped. I, I, I don't know. It, it snapped literally in half and it was an off brand drop hitch. Um, it wasn't from Harbor Freight, but I don't know where it was from. It was just off brand and it just died. So by this point I was frustrated and I didn't know what I was going to do. And so coming back to present day hindsight, right? I should have never bothered trying to hook up to that trailer. I should have let the customer know, Hey, unfortunately this is far past the legal load limit for me to move this and I need you to empty it and I'm going to bill you per day that it sits here while you're emptying it. Um, my contract did not protect me at the time for this, right? My contract just said that I would take it basically. Um, my contract didn't say that if it's over the legal load limit that I won't take it and they're billed per day for how long to keep it until it's in compliance. Um, a lot of things that I, I, I do now that I realized this event helped me, um, you know, make sure that those wouldn't happen again. So again, I was super frustrated. I didn't know what I was going to do. I had a friend offer to come with his Duramax to try and move it. And, uh, he, I agreed, he came out and by this time it had already started raining pretty hard. So, um, I have access to a piece of property that I can dump dirt at probably, uh, 30 minutes away from, from this job site. And so I said, I'm just going to take it there and not deal with the hassle of taking it to the landfill. And, and the reason why at the time, or even now, I don't really take dirt there is because I make more money when I take it to the landfill. And I let the customer know that, Hey, if it's going to the landfill, it costs money. So normally with dirt, I would try to take it to the landfill unless it was my personal or, um, you know, a, a situation like this where I, I didn't have the opportunity. My buddy arrived, we got the trailer hooked up and took off to the spot and so his hitch didn't break he has the same hitch that i use now the bmw um, drop hitch and that's the reason why i bought mine because i was like all right you know this hitch obviously can handle some some weight even though it says that you, know, 
shouldn't load it that heavy. I know that this trailer was far heavier than, than what it could do. And again, like I said, hindsight, I realized that big mistakes. I mean, probably, like I said, this was the biggest mistake I've made probably in any business that I've done in my career, because I now think about just how dangerous it was. And so I'm telling you guys this story, not to um, just tell you about how I messed up, but I'm telling you guys this story so that hopefully you will not make the same mistake because I realize now that it was a terrible, terrible idea and that uh, there was easier ways to handle it. And I was making a huge mistake and I know it was dangerous. So it was a pretty sketchy trip. Um, the trans temps were getting super high. Obviously his truck was extremely squatted, like frame to tire the whole time, basically. Um, trans temps were getting pretty high. We, we did pull over quite a few times. This 30 mile, excuse me, 30 minute trip took us about an hour and 15 because of the rain. And yeah, it was raining. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about how dangerous it was. It was also freaking raining. Uh, it was just all bad. Everything was all bad. Um, and so it was sketchy. Yeah, the skip, the trip was sketchy, but luckily we made it just fine. And, you know, by this time it's like 11 PM. So I'm done with the whole ordeal. And, um, that's another reason why, you know, it was a little more okay. I think for us, uh, I'm not saying that it was okay what we did, but I'm just saying that uh, it was late and there was not a lot of cars on the road, especially because it was raining. Again, I know it was a terrible idea. You don't have to tell me in the comments. So I get the remote hooked up to go and dump the trailer. And, and of course it's too heavy to lift. You know, I don't know what um, I was thinking again, this whole situation was just, um, I didn't know what I was doing. And so, because I didn't know what I was doing, um, I, you know, I, I tried to dump it out. And I, obviously that didn't work. And again, it's raining. So, um, it's a lot heavier because the dirt is now all wet. Um, me and my buddy start trying to get the dirt out with our hands and kicking it with our feet. But, you know, since it had been raining, it's basically all mud and nothing was really coming out, you know, in good quantity, at least. Yeah. A little pieces of dirt here and there, but nothing was coming out good. So, um, after about a solid shoot, I don't know, maybe hour of fighting with this stupid muddy dirt. Um, I said, all right, we'll just unhook the trailer. I'll come back for another time because again, that was my, my property. So I unhooked the trailer and my buddy went to pull out and, uh, yep, you guessed it. His truck was stuck in the mud, two wheel drive Duramax, uh, completely dug into the mud. So it's about midnight. Uh, I'm just ready to freaking put my tarp in the trailer and fall asleep on top of the dirt at this point. And, uh, me and him spent another hour or so digging and putting rocks under his tires to get his truck out. And, uh, probably finally maybe 1 2 AM I was home and, and falling asleep. And so that whole ordeal, not only did I, you know, risk injuring somebody i damaged tons of equipment for the business and i put a buddy of mine in danger where he was also going to be liable or responsible for any issues and um you know got him stuck for hours uh, dealing with this whole ordeal just because i didn't know what i was doing uh, so it was it was a it was a pretty tough night but since we're all caught up and we're back to the, you know, tweakers tweaking, um, that morning I drove out to the spot to my piece of property and I used a forklift there to, uh, to get the dump bed up. Right. So this is probably the biggest uh, piece of equipment mistake that I made out of everything that I did with the equipment, not talking about safety, driving it, but the piece of equipment that I kind of messed up. This is probably the, the biggest mistake I've done honestly, in the whole dumpster rental business. I took the chain to the front of my trailer on the stake pockets, two stake pockets in the front. And then I had the forks and I put the chain around the forks of this heavy duty forklift. And, uh, I was able to lift the dump box by using the forklift and the button on the remote to get the hydraulic cylinder of the trailer, you know, together, because once the, the trailer was already lifted a little bit with the forklift, then the, 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 the pump was working better. Right. Um, and then once it was all, you know, lifted all the way up, pretty much full 90, um, none of the dirt would slide out. It was wet, you know, it was muddy. And uh, I just couldn't get any of it to slide out. So first thing I tried stupidly 
I tried using the forks. Uh, I pushed them up and down very quickly, you know, violently to move the trailer up and down. That didn't work very well. Second thing I tried was to leave the uh, dump body fully tilted back and then picked up the front of the trailer frame to bring it at an even steeper angle. So like I unhooked the chains from the top of the uh, dump bed and that was sketchy. I remember being up there on a pallet. Like I had somebody lift me up on a pallet to get up there. And then I lifted the front of the frame of the trailer with the chains and the forklift. And I freaking had the dump bed at a steeper 90, more than 90 degrees angle. And I still couldn't get any of it to slide out. So um, none, 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 none of that worked. So what I finally tried was uh, I lowered the trailer back onto the new hitch that I had and with the dump body fully extended and up, you know, 90 degrees, I drove around the lot slamming on the brakes with the hydraulic ram fully extended, trying to get the dirt to slide out. So I would step on it. I would use the forklift. Uh, I, I initially used the forklift uh, almost as like a way to get the weight off the back of the truck. And then once it kind of got moving, then I let go and I let the momentum of the truck keep it going. And I would slam on the brakes and uh, and finally, uh, maybe the third or fourth time slamming on the brakes super hard, it did start to slide out. Some of the dirt started to slide out. So once I got the majority of the dirt slid out, I actually went up to the front of my property with a hose and I kind of sprayed out a lot of the rest of the dirt. Um, again, unfortunately, there's no video. There's no photos of this terrible day because I was frustrated and I never thought that I would be making a YouTube video talking about it. But um, once I pretty much got the box empty, I uh, drove home and I figured like, all right, I'm going to you know take the, the trailer, put it in the driveway and kind of figure out if there's any damage. I figured maybe the hydraulic cylinder would be damaged or I don't I didn't really know. So I definitely noticed that something was off when I parked in my driveway. Um, the dump box no longer sat flush with the trailer's frame. So you can see in this photo here that I, I, I noticed, this is the same day when I parked it, I noticed that the dump box was sitting just slightly up. You know? And uh, I, I about lost my mind. After further inspection, I realized that the frame right in the middle of both axles um, bowed up just ever so slightly, which is causing the dump box not to sit flush. I was so frustrated with myself, honestly, uh, mostly for making a bad situation worse. Um, I knew that it was something that I did that bent it. Um, if I would have hand unloaded the trailer, right, I could have I could have went back with a shovel the next day or even, you know, now that I think about it, I could have used the forklift to kind of my advantage to kind of scrape some dirt out with a pallet or something. Um, if I would have hand unloaded it, it wouldn't have, you know, Bent. If it if I would have made it to where it would have lifted by itself, it wouldn't have bent. So I'm not sure exactly what it was that I did that bent the frame, but I really think it was the final part, um, driving and slamming on the brakes. The the, the reasoning why I think that is because when the fr uh, cylinder is fully extended and it's welded to the front of the trailer right by the frame, and then I'm slamming on the brakes with the axles, I could see how the cylinder is gonna try to stay flat and straight, but the back wheels are kind of like snapping forward. And that's what makes me think that's why it got bent um, there, you know? Either way, uh, like I talked about earlier, I had no real way of collecting any money for any damages as I had made mistakes with how I handled the situation from the beginning. My contract clearly stated how much I charge for anything over one ton but it did not clearly state a maximum weight or requirement that the trailer must lift uh, for it to be taken, right? My customer said that the, excuse me, my contract said that the customer cannot damage the trailer and that was it. There was no repercussion at the time. No fee, no fine, just don't do it, right? And that's, I think a lot of the mistakes that I made were regarding my contract saying, just don't do it, not the fee involved. After having a shop go over the trailer, they said it would be fine to continue to use it. Um, so now I have been, basically now I'm reminded all the time 
when I see this trailer, how uh, you know my earliest mistake made me change how I handle all of my business going forward so that it won't happen again. My contract now clearly states that the trailer must lift before I can take it and that the maximum weight capacity is four tons and anything past four tons loaded into it will be charged at $500 per ton. And I do uh, enforce that. I also only allow those heavy materials like dirt, rock, or concrete to be, to be filled to the halfway point in the trailer as uh, that's usually right about four tons. These uh, small things have saved me multiple headaches. And now when I get those jobs with dirt, I'm more familiar with what I can tell the customer. And, and honestly, I turn a lot of them away because it's not worth the headache. And it, it was definitely um, a learning experience. The whole thing, I, I sat there thinking, is this you know the business that I wanna continue doing? Because I was concerned, you know, a bent trailer frame. I was concerned that it was not usable anymore and that I just threw away $8,000 on a $200 job. And what's the point in that? You know, if, if that's what the business would be like, then why would I ever consider doing it? And luckily I decided that it was my mistake that did that and that I could have easily handled the situation better. And that's why I continue to do this business. And, and luckily I'm fairly successful doing this business with my small operation, but it definitely made me think, is this worth it? And I think that a lot of you out there can have that same thing happen to you where you, you uh, are willing to kind of give up pretty easily on this business because there are things that are taxing, right? They hit you right in the face like Mike Tyson. And then you're like, man, is this really what I want to do? This isn't making me any money. But I would just say that go through everything twice and uh, check it off with your freaking expo marker because who knows what things that you missed and what you could be doing better that maybe that wouldn't have happened. Like I fully acknowledge that this was my fault. It's not the contractor's fault for completely overloading the trailer, even though he knows they know they shouldn't have done that. It's definitely not the customer's fault for letting them or for booking it because she was just doing what she was told. It's my fault. I'm the business owner. It's my business. And I should have known what I was doing to make it better for all of us, right? For a better um, party for everybody. And because of that, I didn't charge the customer a, a cent. I did explain to her what went on because she saw us out there for over an hour trying to get it hooked up and she saw my trailer hitch break. So after everything was all said and done, I let her know like, hey, you know, unfortunately, Julia, the, the trailer uh, frame bent and uh, it was a pretty taxing job on us. But, uh, you know, I understand that it's not your fault. I, unfortunately, I'm, I'm unhappy with your contractor because they, they knew they were gonna abuse my equipment. But uh, unfortunately, you know, there's nothing I can do. I Trust me, you guys, I read over that contract a bazillion times to try to see if there was anything I could try to get her for. But uh, it, it, just, it just wasn't, it wasn't in there. So I said, I'm gonna send you an invoice for a dollar. Um, if you feel like tipping me anything for the hard work, you know, go ahead. If not, it's completely understood. So I believe, you know, I think she tipped me two hundred dollars, which, uh, you know, thank you. I ended up giving my buddy a few hundred dollars just for helping me out. But uh, it definitely, yeah, it definitely was mistakes that could have been easily avoided, right? So I mean, thank you guys. Thank you guys for sitting here listening to my long uh, twenty-five minute biggest mistake that I've made. If you're still here, go ahead and leave a comment down below that you made it to the end and uh, tell me, I don't know, tell me, you know, what city state you're from. And if you do the dumpster rental business already, or if maybe you're considering doing the dumpster rental business. And if you don't want to tell me that, just tell me what you like to eat for breakfast and we'll completely confuse the comment section. because There's just going to be a bunch of breakfast talk down there. Um, the last thing that I did want to talk about is if you're interested in renting out your dump trailer uh, as a dumpster, and uh, maybe you don't have the solidest rental agreement, or maybe your rental agreement is pretty good, but you still wanna you know, get a different idea of how I do it with all of my fees and fines, consider purchasing mine. So you can purchase the contract that I use that has all of my fees and fines regarding all the misuses of the trailer and everything else as a legally binding contract needs to be successful in this business. If you buy the contract, it also grants you access to a private dumpster rental discord group with me with hundreds of members where I'm active every single day answering basically every question that is asked. And luckily, because there are people from all around the country, 
you get multiple answers from people that might be exactly where you are helping each other out as well. And what I really like about the group is that every so often when people are overbooked, that's where we also hand out the jobs. So when I'm overbooked, I look for somebody in there that's local to me to give the job to. Maybe you want a little bit more of a personal conversation. I also offer a personal one-on-one -on -one consultation where I am willing to do a market analysis for you. And of course, it also comes with the contract and the private group. So you can find the link to buy the contract in the description below or by going to uh, buymeacoffee.com and searching for me, Elite Equipment Rentals. You get an amazing value just by joining the group. There are hundreds of people from across the country in there, all starting to help each other with the same stuff. Definitely consider it. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more and have a great one. Thank you.